I'm just going to start with very brief introductions and then we'll meet the panelists uh, a little more in depth and we'll uh, explore their thoughts about executive development. Uh, to my immediate left is John Kissinger. He is the Chief Operating Officer of Grafe Engineers, and uh, he will be the next CEO at Grafe. Uh, next to him is I Aisha Domino-Brown, Service Excellence Director at the Easter Seal Southeast Wisconsin. And then we have Steve Scafidi. He's the Field Supervisor of Special Projects at the Nielsen Company. And last but not least, we have Christine McMahon. Uh, she is an inspirational leadership consultant and a contributing columnist for BizTimes Milwaukee. Uh, panelists, I'll, we'll just go down the line. We'll start with you, John. I wonder if you could uh, just give us the one or two minute elevator speech about your educational journey and, and what, it, what it has meant for your career. Uh, thanks, Steve. Um, well. I uh, originally went to undergrad here in Milwaukee at UWM. I'm, I have an engineering degree, and um, I got a very good um, engineering degree at UW-Milwaukee. It's an excellent school. And uh, after I graduated, I went to work uh, right away down in Chicago, got married so shortly after graduation, and went to work and worked about uh, two or three years. And at that time, I decided to uh, quit my job and go back and uh, get a master's degree in engineering, um, which I did. I went over to UW-Madison, and I thought that was uh, one of the transformational experiences probably in my life, going to graduate school. Many of you here are educators, or I'm sure many of you have had that experience, but it's quite a bit different from undergrad experience. Uh, I think I really learned how to learn in graduate school. Um, and I think that was quite helpful for me. In the business that I'm in, consulting engineering, there was a time, and it's still true to some extent, that you almost had to have a graduate degree to, to, be, to get a job. Um, and it was certainly true in those days, but, and that was what I had aspired to do. But the, I think the other thing that really helped me in, in graduate school up at Madison, as I said, was this ability, you're really self-directed. I really learned how to learn. Um, uh, in graduate school, and that has carried me through. Now, I've had a, quite a bit of education, not uh, degreed education since that time, but I think that that was probably one of the transformational experiences few years in my life. Aisha? Good morning, everyone. Um, I received my undergraduate degree from Marquette. My original plan out of high school was to obtain a master's degree in physical therapy, which was a six-year program. I got into year five and realized, hmm, this is not really what I want to do, uh, much to the chagrin of my family with a uh, Marquette price tag. Uh, so I left, went out into the, the working world, uh, found a love for nonprofit organizations. Um, a few years into my career, um, I decided I would like to go back to school to get a master's degree, but I didn't know what to get the master's degree in. I wanted everyone I recommended me getting an MBA. As everyone says, an MBA you can, you ne can never go wrong. Um, but I really wanted something uh, a, little more, a little deeper than an MBA. I wanted something that would apply across sectors um, should I have chosen to leave the nonprofit sector. I wanted something that would apply across occupations um, because as you all know, we never know where our careers may take us. Um, couldn't find anything for years and years. One day, I received a postcard in the mail from Marquette about a new master's program in leadership studies. I read the pamphlet, I looked on the website, and I said, this is it. I found it. Um, so I did pursue my master's degree in leadership studies from Marquette, uh, graduated in 2009. Um, the master's journey was profound for me. Um, basically because of the self-awareness classes, learning more about myself, and as Karen spoke about earlier, how I can influence others, um, understanding how I can influence others, and making sure that I'm able to control myself in order to best influence others. So that is my, my academic journey thus far. I think we're going to have to charge Marquette for that commercial. But <laughs> uh, Next we have Steve Scafidi. Uh, I graduated from UWM in 1983 in uh, mass communication. 
I was recruited uh, by the Nielsen Company, who I still work for 26 years later. Um, they wanted me at the time, I was considered a good communicator, so they wanted me to go sign at the time the first people meter homes in California, which were actually the first ones we were doing in the entire United States. And if anybody knows anything about Nielsen, they, they immediately think of the Nielsen television ratings. Well, that's what that was. We were going from diaries, which we still use today in some areas. We were going from that technology to a new technology with, which had people interact when they watched TV. So they asked me to, come, to go out to California and sign those first few homes. So my journey in the, last, in the next 26 years was in every different part of the company. I worked in basically the sales part of it, worked in some technology areas, working with new things that we were trying to do to, to capture uh, more accurately what people did as far as interacting with television, when, what they watched, how they watched. Um, different management positions, worked in Chicago and LA for a little bit, very short time period. Florida, worked in Chicago, downtown Chicago for a while, and then the last probably 10 years or so I've been in Milwaukee, uh, responsible for things like the National Sample, which is the large panel that we have that, that most people associate with the, with the national television ratings. The last three or four years worked in special projects, which is to me the most exciting part of Nielsen. Um, we do, we find ways to capture new rating information. So when, we, when I came on board, we started looking at internets and television and how those things combined, how people uh, interacted with their PCs to watch TV, where they went, what, what sites they visited, what they watched on, on their PCs or laptops, and, and how that um, factored into their TV viewing. So that's how we started. The last probably year or so, we're working in some really new things that are using like infrared technology. Can we put a device in people's living rooms that tells us who is watching TV by facial recognition? Very, very high tech. And when I tell that to people, they go, that would never work. People won't agree to that. Well, we're in a test right now of 100 homes. And the people, the first 36 households that we asked, not one has said no to that. So it shows you we've gone from where people were used to be very, very worried about technology as far as our specific households. They've kind of moved off that. And they're actually embracing some of those things because they're used to it in their daily lives with their cell phones and all, and all that stuff. So my journey in education. Uh, really came out of fear. We had a company that's very successful, largest media research company in the world, but we downsized tremendously about two years ago. Where I used to have the Midwest, I have the entire country now. We went from four managers to one, I was the guy that, that, that lasted. We went from 50 some employees across the country down to anywhere from 12 to 16 at any given time. So my, my thought process was, I need to make sure that I'm looking out for myself because you never know what's going to happen with, with companies, especially in the private sector. Anybody that worked in the private sector knows how challenging the times are. So I wanted to insulate myself to some degree and say, I'm going to advance my education so that I can at least have an opportunity if something like that happens. So I went back to UWM. I'm in the media studies program in the old mass comm department. Not one person that uh, I remember from my 1980s days is there anymore. It's an entirely new staff, which is not surprising given that, that time frame. But I'm very challenged by the opportunity to, to not only work with those instructors and those professors, but also just to meet younger people. A lot of the people that work for me currently are in their 20s and 30s. I, I'm challenged every day by, by what they give to me. And I, I get the same thing out of the college experience going back. I love UWM. I, that's one of the reasons I chose it when I was an undergrad. I like the environment, I like the, uh, the dynamics of, it, of going to a, a city college, um, and, I, and I'm very excited about the opportunity. I'm about halfway through my master's program, and my goal is to probably, you know, at some point take what I've learned in the media side of the business and maybe be able to teach at a, at a you know, a tech college, UWM situation, so I can kind of pass some of that on. So that's where my educational journey has taken me. Thanks, Steve. Christine? Well, good morning, everyone, and thanks for the opportunity to be here. Um, I am the anomaly in this group because I don't have my master's. I worked for Procter & Gamble for seven years and moved nine times in seven years. Then I became a road warrior working for some fast foods. I was a platinum member at a Marriott, which meant that I spent at least 180 days a year at a Marriott. How many of you can relate to that? 
So, yes, you can now. I had the eastern half of the nation at that time. You had the whole nation, so my sympathies. It's pretty sad when, you know, the steward says, Christine, hi, let me tell you, you should sit here. He's really cute. <laughs> we know you'll never get married because you're never home. <laughs> they were almost right. Well, then I did get married. Uh, actually, I, I moved from Slumfast to Nabisco Biscuit Company. And my agreement with Nabisco is that I would stay in that position for two years, which would be the longest I was in any position. And, of course, they didn't keep their commitment, and they moved me here to Milwaukee. So when I moved here, I did the right-sizing, re-engineering, downsizing, you know that plan. And um, two years into that, I was sitting at a Tom Peters seminar, and he talked about the people that he hired in his company. And one of the characteristics was he hired people with spunk. And I had this out-of-body experience looking at myself saying, and where's yours? <laughs> and I realized that my position stopped feeding my soul. So I wrote my resignation letter on the plane, gave my company 30 days notice, and I quit. And I fell in love with the people here in Milwaukee, so I stayed. Without a job, without a business plan, didn't do it all right, did it all wrong. They said if you could make it three years, you would be profitable in five. They were right. This economy is testing the best of us. Doesn't matter how smart, how great, what our connections are. It's testing all of us. See what resiliency and fortitude we have. So I don't have my MBA, but I will tell you, I've probably participated in more seminars, workshops than you can imagine. I force myself every year to do at least 10 to 20 days. And I can tell you from last August to this March, I took a sabbatical for my business. I studied 10 hours a day on the world economy because we're in trouble. Our fiat currency is driving this country, rather than the biggest power on the face of the earth, to a weakling. And all of us sitting here in this room, we have the ingenuity to save ourselves. And it's going to start right here in our communities, in our states first. And we make ourselves and our states strong, then our country will be strong. So, that time, while it was a little scary taking that much time, literally, I stopped my business for six months. Scary boo. Um, I will tell you, I'm smarter, I'm brighter. Um, I know a lot more, and I'm making better decisions and helping my customers do that. So I'm a bit of the anomaly here. <laughs>